Good evening and welcome once again to another episode of Change of Raiment. We are so excited to be back with you and we have much to cover tonight, so we are just going to get right into it. To our regular STS family, we just want to thank you for being here and for sharing your thoughts in the chat. We really appreciate that as well and encouraging others. And if you're new to this channel uh, and this is your first time viewing Change of Raiment, I would encourage you to look on our platform on the playlist under Change of Raiment and please go back and look at all of the previous lessons that we've done on Change of Raiment as many foundational principles were painstakingly laid out showing the connection between our spiritual change of raiment and also our literal change of raiment and how God wants to clothe us, not only literally, but also spiritually and how that heart reform precedes dress reform, right? So as God clothes us with that spiritual change of raiment, then our literal, our physical clothing begins to change to meet his uh, his desire for us, for our own health, for also our modesty and our protection. So last week I told you that we began a mini series within the larger Change of Raiment series dealing with dress reform is health reform. So again, we are going to be looking at the principle of dress reform from the perspective of health reform. And so last week, what did we deal with last week? Let's see who remembers, who was paying attention. All right, I'll give you a few seconds. Time's up. We dealt with covering the extremities and we dealt with that from a health perspective showing why it is imperative that we cover our extremities, both upper and lower. And today we are dealing with the topic of clothing, uh, sorry, tight clothing, tight clothing. All right, and that's why we've entitled this presentation, I Can't Breathe, Your Clothes Are Choking You to Death. And, you know, to show the gravity and the importance of this topic, I'm going to begin by relating a, a rather harrowing and gruesome scenario here. How many of you have ever been strangled or choked? Probably not many of us. I, I cannot say that I have. OK, well, let's imagine that you're being choked or strangled. How, how do you think you would feel? You would feel helpless, right? That is one of the most horrific and gruesome deaths that a person could succumb to is being strangled. But yet, many individuals are strangling themselves, their organs, their nerves, their tissues, their skin, and every part of the body due to the way that they are dressing. They are committing a suicidal practice in dressing in tight garments and articles of clothing. And we're going to see this tonight, all right? Okay, so we are going to go to the screen. And before we do that, I wanna say that it may be found written, it could be found written on many tombstones, death due to tight clothing. And what would that autopsy report show? Cause of death, strangulation. Self-induced, I might add, based on how individuals are dressing. So again, let's go to the slide here. We read this quotation last week, but we'll start again right here. And the reference is volume four, page 635. It says, dress reform proper, provided for the protection and development of every part of the body, not just some parts of the body, every part of the body. You know, the Bible tells us in 3 John uh, verse two, that God wishes above all things that we prosper and be in health. And a lot of times we relegate this scripture to only what we eat and what we drink, but it has much to do with how we clothe ourselves, right? Many of us are killing ourselves by the way we are dressing, and it's really sad. You know, today we are living in a time of epidemic, pandemic even, I would say. And I'm not talking about pestilences, I'm not talking about C-19, we are living in an epidemic of tight clothing. And you all can attest to that. You all in the chat would agree with me. Everywhere you go, you can go to the store, you can go to the park, you can go to the supermarket. Everywhere you go, you see the world filled with, with tight clothing. Everybody is wearing tight clothing, not just the women. You have men wearing tight clothing, adolescents wearing tight clothing, 
even children wearing tight clothing. And these fashion designers now are purposely doing this. And this has been happening for a while now. You know, the clothes, <laughs> I don't think it's possible for the clothes to become any more tight than they already are. You know, when you look at the clothing nowadays, it looks as though someone took a, a can of spray paint and just spray painted the clothing on individuals. I mean, every crease, every crevice, every curve of the body can be exposed. And this is not pleasing to God. It is not modest. And we dealt with that in some of our earlier presentations. It's, it's nakedness, really, but it's also unhealthful. And we're going to see exactly why it is unhealthful. You know, another trend that is popular, it's not necessarily a new trend. It's something that's been around for a while, but a lot of people are wearing them now and they're wearing them on the outside. They're not just wearing them as undergarments, which is also unhealthy, but they're wearing them on the outside. What could I be talking about? I'm talking about people wearing girdles and corsets. You see uh, individuals in Hollywood, you see these uh, social media influencers, you see the singers, the actors, etc. These individuals, they call it nowadays waist training. So what they're trying to do is achieve a certain look. And so they're wearing these tight girdles, these tight corsets, and, and as tight as they can get them to eventually shrink their waist so that they can achieve, uh, uh, I guess, this hourglass figure, the very, very tiny waist, and then their body, their hips and body goes out. Vanity, all for vanity. And so what's sad is that some even professed dress reformers, professed Seventh-day Adventists have taken on this trend. Now, they may not be wearing the corsets and the girdles on the outside, but many of them are wearing them as undergarments, maybe to smooth out certain parts of their body, but it is extremely deleterious to one's health. And so I want to show you here exactly what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. And you see the man right in the middle. Not only are women wearing these things, but men are wearing them. Again, people are wearing them some women are wearing them. They're doing what they call waist training. They're wearing them for upwards of six hours a day, eight hours, maybe even 10 hours a day to shrink their waist size, right? They're wearing them as undergarments. They're wearing them also as outer garments. They even have them for men, as we said. And a lot of times they call them shapewear and things like this. It, any article of clothing that compresses your organs, that restricts your movement, that impedes your breathing is an unhealthful article of clothing and disease and deformity ensues as a result. Now, I want to show you just how far some people take this extreme to. Look at the picture here on the screen. Now, to me, these women look deformed, but they, they're smiling as though they're happy. These are some of the women that are doing some of this waist training. Look at their waist. Does that look healthy to you? So what happens to their lungs? And we're going to see a slide later on that shows exactly what's exactly what's happening internally when people uh, succumb or people are doing such practices. Look at their waist. I don't even know what their waist would, would measure. But what, what happens to the intestines? What's happening to the kidneys? What's happening to those organs, even their reproductive organs? Do you think, well, one of the women is past the age of childbearing, but do you think that these women could even carry a, a child by this? This is unnatural, but yet because of vanity, because of pride, people are subjecting themselves to this. And that's why I want to go to this next slide. We read it last week, but it bears repeating because people are putting themselves through excruciating pain and even torture just to achieve these, these looks. It says, fashion rules the world, and she is a tyrannical mistress, often compelling her devotees to submit to the greatest inconvenience. Now, do you think it's inconvenient for these women to wear these girdles and corsets for six hours, eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours a day? I'm sure some of them might even be sleeping in them because they're so obsessed with, with looking that way. It says here, Fashion taxes without reason and collects without mercy. She has a fascinating power and stands ready to criticize and ridicule all who do not follow in her wake. So I want to tell you, if you are uh, someone that considers yourself a dress reformer, you say, oh, I would never go to those extremes. But, you know, just to smooth out 
you know, my tummy or so I, I you know, look presentable or you don't see my rolls, I'm, I'm going to put on this girdle or this compression garment underneath. It, it's not healthy. It's not. What is happening to your organs? What is happening to your lungs? Are you able to breathe? Is it, is it comfortable? Or are you putting yourself through torture just to look a certain way? Other people may say, well, I only do it for, you know, the few hours that I'm out and about. But once I get home, I take it off. So it, I'm not carrying it too extreme. It is dangerous. We are not supposed to suffocate any part of our body. And it also puts a strain on the heart. It puts a strain on the circulation. Girdles, no good. Corsets, no good. Um, these compression garments that people are wearing nowadays, no good. Tight clothing, no good, right? All right, so let's go to the next slide here. No tight garments are to be worn. Now we've shown at length why tight garments were immodest. So that's not our point now. So we're not, that's, that was part one of our dress reform, part one and two, how we talked about that the dress, uh, that's nakedness when you wear these tight clothing. But now let's look at it from the perspective of health. Let's see what happens to our organs and happens to um, our circulation when we dress in this manner. It says here, but dress reform comprised more than shortening the dress. Now that talks about the dresses that were sweeping the filth off of the ground, the excessively long dresses, and clothing the limbs. Dress reform included every article of dress upon the person. It lifted the weights from the hips by suspending the skirts from the shoulders. Let's pause right there. Back in Ellen White's time, they had these uh, hoop skirts. They had heavy skirts that were weighted. They had weights on the skirt. And so what happened was that these weights were pulling down. And of course, they were putting a strain and they were also tight along the waist. Right. And so they were putting a strain on the internal organs, the lungs, etc. OK, so that's what we're talking about here. These heavy, uh, uncomfortable, tight skirts. OK, let's continue. It says it removed the tight corsets. So corsets were prevalent here in Ellen White's day. They're prevalent today again, which does what? What does it do to the lungs? It compresses the lungs. What does it do to the stomach? And people wonder why they have all kinds of stomach issues, indigestion, constipation, you name it, uh, even certain cancers and other internal organs and induce curvature of the spine and an almost countless train of diseases. And then this is the context of the statement we started with. Dress reform proper provided for the protection and development of every part of the body. So it's very imperative that we wear clothing that does not restrict or constrict any of our functions of the body, be it our breathing, our free range of movement, none of that. If you are restricted and you're not able to bend, to stretch, to move, to breathe, those are clothing that you must dispense with, whether they're undergarments or whether they're your regular clothing. And I'm talking to men and women because, like I said, it's an epidemic. Men are wearing tight clothing too. And on that point, let me just say this. A lot of these male fashion designers, there's a reason why they're making the men's clothing tight like this nowadays. For one, they're trying to feminize the men. And for two, a lot of these male fashion designers are homosexuals. And so they're trying to accentuate certain parts of the male anatomy. So we'll digress there. All right, so let's look at this statement here. What kind of clothing are we also to avoid? It says tight bands, and this is belts. Be very careful. I'm not preaching against belts. There's nothing wrong with belts to keep up your skirts, ladies, or your pants, gentlemen. But be careful of how tight you pull your belts, especially these belts that women are wearing. Now women are wearing belts almost like how they're wearing the corsets. They're pulling the belts all the way up, just barely under their breasts, and they're pulling the belts as tight as they can to where they, they can't even breathe. They can't even take a full breath of air because the belts are so tight. Be careful, fashion, right? All right, so this says tight bands or waists do what? They hinder the action of the heart and lungs and should be avoided. It says, no part of the body should at any time be made uncomfortable. Remember that first statement we read about fashion taxing without reason and subjecting the wearer to the most uh, inconvenient and painful experience? It says, 
No part of the body should at any time be made uncomfortable by clothing that compresses any organ or restricts its freedom of movement. So you need to ask yourself, am I able to move? If you're not able to move, then that's not a garment you should be wearing. You should be able to easily raise your hands above your head, right? And those garments should, should move with you. They should be loose fitting. Now, let me just say this because we don't want to take things to the extreme. That doesn't mean you have to be wearing sizes that are three times too big, okay? We are supposed to wear clothing that fits, okay? But they're to be loose enough to not reveal the shape or the form of the body. They are to be loose enough where we can move, where we can breathe, right? Okay, so let's, um, let's go forward. Let's look here at this slide here. Let's look at what happens. I want you to look at the picture here. Now the picture on my left is of the normal, of a normal uh, lungs. You know, you see their rib cage, you see lungs, you see the small intestine, the large intestine. That's normal. Then if you look at the other picture, you see how these girdles and these tight corsets, look at the, look at the stomach, look at the intestines, look, what, look at the deformity that ensues as a result. How could one even breathe properly like this? And it permanently changes these things. We saw the picture of the, of the three women that have been doing this waist training and all of this, uh, what they call waist training and wearing these girdles for many hours a day. We saw just how tiny their waists are. What do you think happens to the kidneys in the back? We, we can't see the kidneys there, but we can see what's happening to the lungs. They shrink, so you cannot breathe properly. properly. What happened, all of these organs are displaced and misplaced and they cannot function. What about the liver? What about the spleen? What about the heart? What kind of strain is placed on the heart? Then you see here the skeletal system. We read a statement from Sister White that talked about how the, skelet, um, how the spine is often curved as a result of this manner of dressing. Okay, so it's very again, deleterious to one's health. And I could go on and on and on, all right? So let's read this again. This is from education. And let's, it would be well that we pay attention to this. It says, an almost endless train of disease results from unhealthful modes of dress. And careful instruction on this point should be given. Praise God for this series. Impress upon the pupils the danger of allowing the clothing to weigh on the hips or to compress any organ of the body. The dress should be so arranged that a full respiration can be taken and the arms be raised above the head, that's what I was getting at earlier, without difficulty. The cramping of the lungs not only prevents their development, but hinders the processes of digestion and circulation. There's no way your blood can freely circulate in an environment like that where the organs are compressed and thus weakens the whole body all such practices lessen both physical and mental power. What do you think would happen spiritually if your physical and mental powers are lessened and weakened? Spiritually, it would affect you as well. And then it says, thus hindering the student's advancement and often preventing his success. Now, it's not just for the students. It goes for all, correct? All right, because students aren't the only ones that are dressing this way. As we said, it's people of all ages, male, female, upper body, lower body, wearing these tight clothing. All right, let's look at some of the other dangers of compressing the waist. The dangers resulting from compression, I'm sorry, the dangers resulting from compression, compressing the waist are not realized by the majority of women, though many able pins have treated upon the subject. Many claim that tight lacing is now nearly or quite abandoned. Is it abandoned? No. We just showed in the previous opening slides that people are still wearing this, these bands and these corsets. And such may think these remarks are uncalled for, but it is true today that the clothing of most women is worn too tight. And I'm gonna add, in 2023, the clothing of most men is too tight. And I'm sure men, you can attest, they're even making the suits for men tight. It's hard for them to even find you almost have to buy suits, you know, two sizes up just to get a proper fit because all of the suits, again, are made too tight. So the clothing of men and women are too tight for the proper action of the vital organs. Every article 
of dress upon the person should be worn. Every article so loose that in raising the arms, the clothing will be correspondingly lifted. And what I want you all to do right now, where you are at home, raise up your arms and see if your clothing as you raise your arms are correspondingly lifted. That's a litmus test. Are your clothing fitting properly or are they too tight? All right, you don't have to comment in the comments whether or not, but just do that for your own, um, for your own personal benefit. All right, let's go here. And then we're going to get to a visual after this. So it says, we object to the popular style of women's dress because it is not healthful to say nothing of the, what does she call this? She calls it a suicidal practice of the waist. So many of us, again, we're strang strang strangling, <laughs> strangling ourselves to death by these tight belts, these tight laces, these tight um, clothing, even our skirts we have to make sure are not tight, even if they do flow out. To say nothing of the suicidal practice of the waist, so as to suppress natural respiration, inducing the habit of breathing only from the top of the lungs, shallow breathing, right? And not to dwell particularly upon the custom of suspending unnecessary weight upon the hips. In consequence of too many and too long skirts, there is much that may be said relative to the unhealthfulness of the fashionable style of women's dress. It burdens and obstructs the free use of the lower limbs. Your clothing should not make you feel numb. Your clothing should not be painful. And then it, said, it closes off by saying, this is contrary to the design of God in securing to women the blessings of activity and health. Again, God wants us to, be, to prosper and be in health. He wants for our own well-being. He wants us to enjoy a, a good quality of life. So why are we making ourselves invalids and lifelong sufferers because of our unhealthful modes of dress? So now we're going to go to a visual here. And so while we're preparing that visual, we'll go back to the screen here and I'll continue talking. So again, we dealt with the tight clothing. We dealt with exposing the extremities from the perspective of modesty, right? We discovered that the tight clothing that they are immodest, a form of nakedness. I'm repeating myself to reiterate, right? Repetition deepens the impression. But now we're looking at it from the perspective of health. So again, if you missed those previous lessons, go to our first two lessons. We dealt at length with modesty. We dealt at length with um, nakedness from the scripture, right? And we showed why it was important to cover up and why it was important from a modesty perspective, not to reveal the skin. So again, we are going to now go to our visual and hopefully you all will be able to see it here. All right, so we are back with our mannequins here and I'm gonna ask you to take a quick pop quiz really quickly for us, all right? Based on all of the previous lessons, we're on lesson seven, right? based on everything that we've studied before, and I want you to put your answers in the chat. Is this, are these mannequins dressed according to dress reform? Look at them from head to toe and reflect back on the topics we covered. We covered modesty, we covered nakedness, we covered covering the extremities. Today we're covering tight clothing, right? Are they dressed? We also covered distinction of dress between male and female. We discovered, we also, dealt with um, simplicity of dress, right? Ex versus extravagant of dress, extravagance of dress. We dealt with dressing for God's glory and for beauty. So are these individuals dressed according to dress reform? Don't just say yes, don't just say no. Tell us why, tell us in what ways. Now, while you're putting your answers in the chat here or in the comments, for those of you who will watch this after the live is over, I want you to notice both of these mannequins. Let's deal with Sarah first. We, I think we named her Sarah. Some days she's a dress reformer. Unfortunately, she's back and forth. Today she's not a dress reformer. So anyway, she is wearing a very tight dress. Okay, as I said before, a dress like this shows every crease, crevice, and curve on a person's body. Now some individuals will say, well, it's okay, there'll be a scoffer, it's okay, um, 
if you're slim and you don't have a lot of curves to wear tight things because it doesn't know. I don't care. You can be small, you can be large, you can be anything in between. Tight garments are immodest for anyone. And as we discovered, they're unhealthful. Now, as I was mentioning the belt, individuals are wearing these big belts like this as though they're preparing for a, a powerlifting competition or something. And what they're doing, they're using the belts similarly to how the corsets and how the girdles are used. So what they're doing, they're putting the belts as tight as they can. And again, as I just want to give you a visual, they're raising the belts right here, right under their, their breast here. And what happens? The breathing becomes very shallow. They're, they're out of breath. It's uncomfortable, right? And this has become a very fashionable style. Individuals accessorizing their clothing and they're pull I'm not saying there's anything necessarily wrong with the belts, but be very careful because you're pulling them too tight. And not only that, in so doing, sometimes you become immodest because you're accentuating certain parts of your body by the way you're wearing these belts. All right. So that's Sarah. This is very tight. It's very form fitting. It's very unhealthful. And this is a mannequin. But in order for people to wear this, what do they often put under a dress like this? to smooth out certain areas of their body. Again, they're putting on the girdles or the shapewear so their stomach doesn't pooch or so that, you know, certain rolls and things aren't shown. So it's unhealthful and it's immodest. And I'm beseeching our sisters, especially as we're dealing with Sarah here, to, we need to reform our dress. We need to uh, stop wearing tight clothing. Now let's look at, we haven't given him a name yet. Put in the chat what we should call this male mannequin. All right, so he is, has been in the weight room and he's been lifting weights. And so now he wants to show off, uh, get some attention from the ladies. So he wants to show off his muscles. So what does he put on? He puts on a muscle shirt and he's wearing very immodest, uh, tight. I don't know if you can, okay, there's the full shot. Tight um, leggings. Now this is a mannequin. But people, males in real life are wearing things like this, and it's extremely, extremely immodest. I do not need to uh, go into detail there. All right? So, yeah, go into detail. <laughs> okay, somebody said to go into detail. You can see a part of the anatomy, and, and it's, it's, not, it's not good. So just as the female is exposing certain parts that should not, private air, pr private parts. Again, it's nakedness. The buttocks is exposed. The front reproductive areas are exposed. Same thing with the, the lady here. And when ladies wear that, it's the same thing. And again, we've dealt with distinction of dress in the sexes, but now you see women walking around with uh, sp spandex. You see that all over the place. It's very common, especially when people are working out. That's their preferred workout attire, male and female. And it's, it's not according to... Uh, God's principles. It's not healthful. It's not modest. I digress there. So hopefully you finished your pop quiz and you put in the chat um, your answers. We're going to go back and I'm going to share with you seven principles, seven red flags so that you can know for a surety if your clothing are too tight. All right. So we'll be back with you at the couch and we'll um, deal with those red flags. OK, so in the interest of time, I'm going to talk while this graphic is up. But these are some red flags that you need to ask yourself. OK, that if your clothing, whether or not your clothing is too tight. So I have seven of them. Seven is God's perfect number, the number of completion. Number one, I'll wait till the camera comes back on so you can, you know, see my expressions and everything and get more out of it. All right. So again, what, what are red flags? Red, are, red flags are things that indicate to us danger, right? Danger and run. So you don't have to have all of these seven red flags present. If, any one, if even one of these red flags is present, that is a garment that you must get rid of, dispense with, or an article, like we talked about some of the accessories, the belt and everything like that, right? So number one, are you in pain due to your clothing? That's number one. That's a no brainer. Your clothing should not be painful. You should not be in pain based on how you dress. OK, so if your clothing is painful, it's too tight. Get rid of it. 
or don't wear your belt tight, right? <laughs> All right. Can you breathe deeply? Are you able to take a full, take a breath right now, take a deep breath right now. Are you able to take a full inspiration of air? If you're not able to do that, your clothing is too tight. If you're not able to breathe normally, your breathing is short or fast, or it's uncomfortable for you, clothing is too tight. All right, what about when you sit down? Do you have to unbutton your skirt, ladies, gentlemen? Do you have to unbutton your suit jacket? Do you have to loosen your belt when you sit down? If you do, it's too tight. What about when you're eating? Oh, I need to loosen up, loosen up my belt. I need to unbutton my, my shirt or I'm going to explode out of it. Too tight. Too tight. All right. What about red flag number four? Does your clothing leave impressions on your skin? Does it leave marks on your skin? Redness, right? Too tight. Your clothing shouldn't be leaving deep impressions on your skin like that. It's too tight if it does, right? Can you move freely? Can you move naturally? This is red flag number five. If you can't move freely, you can't move naturally, you can't bend down to pick something that you dropped off the ground, you can't stretch to reach something, your clothing is too tight. What is red flag number six? Is the shape of your body exposed? The shape of your body exposed. Your creases, as I said before, creases, crevices, curves, are they exposed by the clothing you're wearing? If the answer is yes, too tight. What must you do with that garment? And number seven, do you have to change? I wish I could demonstrate this, but I, I won't. I won't make myself look silly here. Do you have to change or adapt your walk to accommodate your clothing? Many people aren't even able to walk properly because their clothing is too tight. And so they're walking almost like robots. Okay, they're not able, again, to move naturally or to move freely too tight. Get rid of it. It's not worth it. You don't want to die and ha bring about disease and deformities due to your tight clothing, right? So those are the seven red, red flags. Hopefully you caught them. If you didn't, praise God, this is on YouTube. You can rewind and you can get those, uh, you can get those seven red flags. I want to close with this right here. So now there's an epidemic again, not only of the spandex, but of the skinny jeans, right? Men are wearing them. Women are wearing them. Horrible, horrible. Again, women shouldn't even be wearing trousers. We've already established that. That's not my point here. But look, I want you to look at what happened to um, this woman. She ended up in the ER. She ended up in the hospital for four days. She literally, I'm not going to take the time to read all of this, but she literally had to have these skinny jeans cut off of her. She could not get them off. Right? Why? Why go through all of that, right? So now doctors have warned that wearing too tight trousers could seriously damage your health. You think? Medics highlighted the unusual case of a 35-year-old woman who spent how many days in the hospital? Four days, and she had to be on a drip after her skinny jeans caused her to collapse in agony. She laid on the ground for four hours before being rescued. What happened to her? Well, the circulation was constricting her, her blood flow. She experienced swelling in her legs. They called it compartment syndrome. She had suffered from that. She damaged her nerves and her muscles in her calves. And sometimes by the, these tight clothing, there is irreparable damage done to the body. And why? For the God of fashion. Many people are bringing disease upon themselves and lifelong problems due to fashion. All right, so... I want you to pause the video. You can read the rest of this story. And I'm pretty sure this was reported on, but I'm pretty certain that she's not the only one that this has happened to. It's probably happened to a litany of other individuals. Let's look. Let's go back to the corsets. We're going to come full circle. Look what happened to this uh, individual here for wearing these corsets. This was a, someone that was trying to shrink her waist. She was doing this waist training, right? She had been doing it for two years. From work to grocery store to school, she doesn't leave home without that. And so what happened? She would wear it for eight hours a day. And look what the doctor said. That Look at the health risk. We're just confirming what the spirit of prophecy and common sense tells us. The harm is damage to your internal organs, your intestines, bruising your kidneys, said cosmetic surgeon. All right? 
Some reports even attributed acid reflux, crushed acid reflux, excuse me, crushed ribs, blood clots, increased pressure of the heart with waist training, right? So again, stop wearing these girdles and these shapewears and these corsets and all of these things. It is very detrimental to your health. Stop wearing tight clothing. I'm going to end again with a solemn quotation and then we'll close out. Look, look at what this says. And I want professed Sabbath keepers, us that profess to believe in present truth. Look at this. It says, I saw that some professed Sabbath keepers spent hours that were worse than thrown away studying. What are they studying? Their Bibles? Studying this or that fashion to decorate the poor mortal body while you make yourselves appear like the world and as beautiful as you can, remember that the same body may in a few days be food for worms. Serious, serious friends. And while you fixed it, fix it up to your taste to please the eye, you are dying spiritually. God hates your vain, wicked pride, and he looks upon you as a whited sepulcher, but within, full of corruption and uncleanliness. Friends, again, God wants to give us a change of raiment. God wants to change our heart. God wants us to be in health physically, spiritually, mentally, morally, and in every other area. And so he give, gives us these principles out of love. It's not don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, because he's just trying to be arbitrary and control us. He's doing it for our own well-being, for our protection, our health, so that we can enjoy the blessings that he's given to us. And so, friends, we leave it there. And next week, we will have another special presentation for you. So I pray that you will all join us next week. Until then, God bless. Maranatha.